scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Every time God wants to visit a territory, He does that by sending His word. And you see, the way it works is that you cannot believe until you hear. The Bible gives us the dynamics of hearing and being transformed by the power of God's word. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, let's look at verse 15. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. Will we have it projected, media? Okay, let me use my Bible then. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 10 I meant to say forgive me Romans 10 let me read verse 14 and 15 apologies I'm not sure it will be projected for now it says how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent? So look how it works. You are sent to preach. You preach so they hear. They hear so they believe. They believe and they are saved. So if there is no salvation, it's because there is no faith. And if there is no faith, it's because there is no hearing. And if there is no hearing, it is because there is no communicator of that truth. And if there is no communicator of that truth, it is because he is not sent. This is what the Bible says. Are we together? So every time we see that God has sent people, we know that in the presence of a preacher, there must be the hearing of faith. And when there is the hearing of faith, then there is believing. And whenever there is believing, there will always be a manifestation of those things that were spoken by the Lord. And so I pray that within the few minutes that we have to share tonight, that you minimize distraction and let your heart be inclined to the word. Because when the word comes, it comes to lift. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says how that he told me, son of God, rise upon your feet and ezekiel had no strength to rise verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the communications of god's word is more than a lecture beyond the words and the thoughts communicated there is an impartation of the spirit behind that word and it makes that word fruitful and it makes it produce results 
hallelujah i'll be teaching along the line of the theme and i just want to introduce us tonight to the whole idea of enlargement and then we'll look at a few dynamics by tomorrow but i believe with all my heart that anything that is here not planted and ordained of the christ will not survive these sessions Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 8. Oh dear. I wish, I hope that the walk on the projection so that we can make progress. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs. Let's begin tonight from there. Proverbs chapter 4. And verse 18 did i say eight apologies 18 proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 here's what the bible says the bible says but the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day that the path of the just is in the similitude of a shining light that shines ever brighter some version to say unto the perfect day in redemption all believers with no exception please pay attention all believers with no exception have the heritage and the destiny of the glory that excels we call it the ever increasing glory are we together the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, the glory of God now. It says we are changed from glory to glory. So advancement and excellence is the heritage of the believer in Christ. You have to understand this. On account, I hope you realize that the Christian faith is predicated upon jesus christ who came as a revelation of the love of the father the foundation of the christian experience is not just god is jesus christ sent the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 it says god who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to the prophets had in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he hath appointed to be heir over all things are we together and then the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god so the foundation of a believer's journey 
starts with Jesus Christ not miracles not signs not wonders Jesus Christ is the foundation the focal points the epicenter of the Christian experience if for any reason you route your Christian experience through any other angle miracles signs wonders breakthrough eventually you will collide with error the journey has to start with Jesus Christ all the other provisions will come on the way but he becomes the foundation and he becomes the focal point of the Christian faith are we together that means every other thing we are going to discuss in this conference and in any sermon must be derived from that standpoint it is because of Jesus and the possibilities that his death has provided his burial his ascension his exaltation it is from that standpoint we can now begin to examine the implication of what happened when he died and resurrected are we together Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 the Bible says Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus he began to mentor them and he said blessed be the father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says who had blessed us are we together blessed us with all spiritual blessings not some all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ you have to understand this so we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that reside in the realm of the spirit and only routed to the saints through the office of the Christ that means you cannot obtain any true spiritual blessing in isolation to Christ he is the door he said the door that opens you up a door means an authorized channel if a visitor comes to your house through a window he's in your house but he's not invited because the window is not the way to get into the house is that true when a visitor passes through a door that means that he is welcome that means he passed legitimately are we following tonight right so i said all that to let us know that in christ listen carefully we have the destiny of the glory that excels it is the will of god listen and pay attention please it is the will of god that my life and your life should demonstrate the excellence of the kingdom ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 paul again was mentoring the church in ephesus and he began to tell how that when you read from verse 3 the point of emphasis is verse 10 just leave verse 10 but from verse 3 he says how that by revelation this mystery was given to him is that true that in times past in other ages it was hidden but in these last days he had revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit verse 10 says to the intent that means this is the whole goal behind all of this to the intent that now that it be known to principalities and powers by the church that there be a demonstration of the multi-dimensional multifaceted wisdom of God Romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 and 19 the Bible says I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God one version says creation is waiting for God to reveal those who his sons truly are apostle john was teaching and he says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be like so we have been called into a life of excellence we have been called into a life of glory advancement is part of every believer's heritage enlargement is part of every believers heritage if you do not believe this as true the grace to walk in it is never released you have to understand this the assignment of the anointing is to validate the word of god that means if there is no sent word the anointing has no assignment in your life the anointing has the singular assignment of bringing expression and validity to the word of god the assignment makes the word to always look and remain true that's the assignment of the anointing so if there is no sent word the anointing is barren we have been called into the life of grace and excellence never allow anybody preach you out of this truth that in Christ according to the authority of Scripture 
that is greater than the opinions of men that is greater than the sentiments of religion let god be true and every man be a liar the word of god is very vocal as to the fact that in christ we all have a holy calling is that true the bible says that we are a royal priesthood and holy nation it calls us a peculiar people it says we have been called out of darkness into light to reveal the glory the excellence of god so advancement is our heritage in christ enlargement is our heritage in christ biology shows us that wired into man and creation is the instinct and the mandate to multiply and to increase in genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 are we still together the bible says when god made man when he got to verse 26 he says and god said let us make man the word there is the word eloha god said the singular the godhead said let us make man in our own image and let that man be after our likeness what does it mean to be after the image of god the spiritual character the glory of god then the likeness of god means to function like him two hands one head are we see? that is the likeness but the image of god is what satan was looking for you see satan already had the likeness of god but he wanted the image so the bible says that he gave us dominion pay attention please he gave us dominion when you read from 26 down to 20, 28 he blessed man adam dark earth when he blessed that man the woman was still in the man at the time and he gave them dominion over the birds of the air the fish of the sea now listen the instruction was be fruitful then multiply then replenish then subdue and he says to have dominion so part of the dominion mandate necessitates enlargement it is disobedience to remain at the same level are we together now please pay attention it is it is not it is not an issue of showing that you are moving well a command was given and the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful faithful to the call faithful to the command are we still together the instincts to enlarge so when a woman takes in a seed from her husband without any effort on her own part the seed begins to grow is that true and to occupy the entire space of the womb as at the time of the arrival that seed is something that may not even be seen with the natural eye but then because of that dominion because of that command because of that character of god to enlarge the seed begins to enlarge until after nine months you now don't have a tiny seed again you have a full grown baby and you would think that's the end of the enlargement when the baby comes out of another environment the enlargement continues are we together now yes luke chapter 2 and verse 52 speaking about jesus himself the bible says and jesus increased he enlarged he increased in wisdom in favor the bible declares are we together in stature and then in favor with god and with men even jesus the word of god he increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men let's run through a few scriptures to convince us and to rest that case once and for all that it is god's desire for us to increase that means it is never god's desire for you to be at the same level where he started with you listen in the parable of the talents matthew 25 just give it there we're not reading it the bible says that he gave on to one three men is that true he gave on to one five talent he gave on to another two talents the last he gave one talent and then the bible says he went and allowed them to do whatever they wanted to do with it the one with five talent did something and expanded he increased he had five more the one with two had two more but the one who had one even though he had only one at least he did not lose that one 
you think he will be commended for at least still having that one left when the master came back and demanded accountability the one who had five had five more well done thou good and faithful servant hallelujah sorry about that in one of the synoptic accounts you would see that the reward given to them was authority over greater kingdoms greater territories was the reward that was given to them and then the one with one talent here's what he said he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of doing this i i buried it in the earth and he looked at him and he called him number one wicked number two unprofitable that means god never expects anything to remain the way he started it if god gave you a mind he should not see you at that same level god is a god of motion god is a god that moves he does not remain at the same level the only thing that is consistent is his character but as far as the vastness of his glory is it is ever increasing Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. By the time John would see the same Jesus who mentored him on earth in the book of revelation it was another level of glory it was not the same glory he saw john saw him in the isle of patmos and he said you mean this is the man that i walk with god should never find you at the same level spiritually financially in your influence it should never be that you should be at the same level listen as a man of god the grace that was upon you when you started should not be the same level of grace that grace and peace can be multiplied your wisdom should not be at the same level your influence should not be at the same level the access to resources that you have should not be at the same level your comprehension of spiritual truth should not be at the same level Let's look at the following scriptures very quickly. Am I wasting your time? Psalm 115 verse 4. Please write it if a little Bible study now. Media, please help us as much as you can. Psalm 115 and verse 14. 115 and verse 14. I may not be able to turn to them, but if we can have them projected. Thank you. God bless you. Read it with me, please. We'll be reading it very quickly. Ready? One, two, read. It says, the Lord shall increase you he never said more just once the lord shall increase you more and more and your faith keeps adding more and more and more and more and more the lord shall increase you someone prophesy say the lord, the lord shall increase me more and more forget about what your bank account is saying forget about what your village is saying just prophesy the lord shall increase me more and more please sit down Isaiah chapter 54 please from verse 1 to 3 very quickly please write it down these are scriptures you see the basis of our confidence in the faith work is not just the speakings of a man of God but the scripture don't just believe because you like and trust who is speaking you must believe because it is truth from the Word of God this is why I'm running through scripture. I already believe what I'm telling you. But I need you to believe it. Psalm 54 from verse 1 to 3. 1 to read Yola. Sing, O barren. Oh dear. Just, just start from verse 2 since you're already there, please. Let's go to verse 2. We're reading just 2 and 3. Psalm, you got it right. Ah, huh? Isaiah. Did I miss something? Isaiah 54. Forgive me. 
Isaiah 54. You were correct. Thank you. All right. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Uh huh. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. Why? For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Verse 2. Read if you are a Christian. Uh huh. Spare not, lengthen thy court and strength. May verse 3 be a prophecy for you. Go ahead and read. It said, For thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. Job chapter 8, verse 7. Next verse. Job chapter 8 verse 7 I'm showing you from the authority of scripture that it is in every believer's destiny not the destiny of men of God not the destiny of special people from wealthy families from any village from any city don't let nobody bully you through their orientation the moment you are in Christ you sustain the same potential if you believe to enlarge and hear me for those of you who may think i'm coming from a background where i can't speak english i didn't have the privilege to go to school i bring you words of comfort there is a god in heaven and if you can place your faith he will pick you from right from that village that place where you are job chapter 8 and verse 7 job 8 and verse 7 go ahead and prophesy as you read ready one to read it says though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end hallelujah i know i went to a school where we sat on the ground to read but don't be too quick to laugh at me god is doing something i know i came from a family where we go to the farm before we go to school though my beginning be small i may not look like it but the spirit of grace sustains the ability to enlarge you that one day when you tell people this is where i came from they will say we can't believe this that's why i sang that song it is because the lamb has prevailed worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain mighty mighty is the lamb mighty mighty is the lamb mighty mighty is the lamb that was slain listen i may not have any evidence around my life right now my parents may be in a room where you can see the sky from inside that room you may not even have any privilege as far as a sociological advantage is concerned but right where you are your first assignment is to believe that on account of what jesus has done there is an opportunity given to all men pay attention given to all men regardless your age regardless your gender there is no thing like too late abraham started at 75. never say it is too late we're talking about the god of heaven are you following my discussion now so please sit now that you know and you believe that in christ listen do you know why we respect scripture so much because God is bound to his word not to your needs he's bound to his word not to your emotions he's touched with the feelings of your infirmity but he only responds in honor to his word so if the basis of your activity in the scripture is just or in the faith life is just emotions you may not get anything from God now when the devil tries to ask you what makes you think tomorrow you are going to be blessing the world from this village you will sing this song for him it is because that lamb has prevailed 
is worthy to open the book and when the book is open crying and weeping stops it says weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed are we still together so it is our destiny in christ and being as simple as possible so that everybody can understand let me give us one last scripture genesis chapter 17 this was a promise that was made to abraham and verse 6 genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 remember that every promise that was made to abraham was made to abraham and his seed which was jesus not isaac his seed and then the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says if ye be christ then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so we know for a shorty that everything we see god tell abraham by the covenant of being grafted into christ that truth is applicable to us this is doctrine are we together now genesis 17 and verse 6 read it as though god were speaking to you if you have it projected genesis 17 and 6 genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 do i turn there or do we have to wait okay fine read with me please one two read now keep that scripture there hold on where you see thee i want you to change it and put your name do you believe that one to read and i will make joshua selman exceeding fruitful I really want you to believe everything I have been saying can I tell you this God does not lie Allah by a career if he speaks it is because he sustains the ability to make it happen there are two people who will shout now under the anointing please bring them out we'll continue but i just saw a light i just saw the power of god there are two people god is bringing mighty deliverance i just saw that light please bring them out right now as i'm speaking the mighty power of god is coming on two people Bring them out. hearing a name Jonah who is that please Jonah we're going to sit down to continue scripture but let's just honor what God is doing I'm hearing a name Jonah who is who is that I don't know if he's a gentleman or Jonah I just want to speak to that person right now Jonah is there someone like that Jonah listen God does not play games and entertain people no every time you see remember you prayed and fasted and prepared 
the power of God is coming on two people outside among these people at the overflow as I just saw a strong anointing coming on two people this is a program that this territory will never recover from the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit now in the name of Jesus everything that represents witchcraft over this family I stand by the God of heaven and I command it let it be destroyed now let it be destroyed now here at the upper room cathedral we take authority over everything that has kept these destinies and these families down now let them go in the name of Jesus one of these I don't know I'm seeing light just the ministry of angels where these our mothers are I'm seeing the power of God come on one of them I don't know why but I'm seeing there's something God is taking out right now this is what I'm saying help them please I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus the son of the living God just this robe this is what I'm seeing I decree and I declare by the power that in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is not of God I curse it right now I curse it right now in the name of Jesus Christ hold the gentleman hallelujah okay hallelujah there's a gentleman who is going to start running out now just hold the person and bring the person out whether you are an usher or not this is a ministry of signs and wonders and so this is nothing unscriptural we love Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on a gentleman saying please do not miss any session of this especially tomorrow night um, I trust that God will grant grace there are some of you who came here with hunger to receive hunger to receive an impartation for your ministries help that lady don't leave them standing help her please so that they don't fall ushers just make sure you are around them don't leave them standing help them so you yourself don't fall victor you may need to help them eh? just guide them on what to do i'm seeing chains and I'm seeing the number seven. There are seven people under the sound of my voice. I'm seeing chains around your hand. Right now we'll continue, but the power of God is coming on all seven of them. Please bring them out here right now. In the name that is above all names. I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Here at Yola, in the name of Jesus. Every devil that has held anyone's destiny down, let them go now. Help them please let them go now please whether you are an usher or not just help anyone under the anointing there please bring them out i decree and declare deliverance please open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute decree and declare this is my night of encounter in the name of jesus the son of the living god Adamawa, a revival comes to your territory in the name of Jesus. A revival comes to your territory. There is no planting and no skimming of darkness that will stand your way this night. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy. Is Hallelujah. 
Hold on, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a pastor? This man on white. Hold on. You are a pastor. You have a church? Ah? Please don't see this as a distraction. Help us. Very soon they will be back to their seat. You organized a meeting with hunger and you asked the Lord to come and visit your territory. This is why he has come. Father, in the name of Jesus, every power that is not of the Christ, we command in the name of Jesus, they leave these families now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Here at Upper Room Cathedral, in the name of Jesus, we bring liberty to these families. You are a pastor. From where? Oasis of love. Oasis of love. Can I pray for you? Because I'm seeing that God is... Stand up. I'm seeing God placing a teaching grace in a strong dimension. A teaching grace. I stretch my hands. May that power come upon you. You will never be the same. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I decree and declare every family here represented that has been held by any siege of darkness be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. And every blessing that has been stolen from every family, their joy, their peace, we command a sevenfold restoration now. Let these families never be the same, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We establish your victory. We declare that liberty is yours in Christ. Let it be so now. Let it be so forever. In Jesus name I pray please be seated if you can those that are fine you can take them back to their seats don't lose touch of what we are teaching we are still teaching every time the word of god comes his power is also there to heal to deliver and to bless help them please just help them listen let me explain something some of you i know that it's nothing new in the body of christ to see the manifestations of the spirit like this but i want you to know that when god moves like this um, here and there I know that there have been abuses of grace and there's been misuse of things here and there but please don't you confuse what is happening there are people genuinely called of God who have paid their price with God in the spirit are we together now I need to say this so that you understand that so that the next time you are praying and you are saying God come and visit our land he really answers prayers but you must be ready to receive the answer he's bringing you will be amazed to hear the testimonies from these lives doors that have been closed open age-long captivities just like that who is like you lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean road to the Lord of Lords we will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun 
to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints, sing praise. As many of them who can return, just let them be. But please be patient, we are not wasting our time. These people are not just making noise here, God is helping them. We declare your liberty for you. You don't have to bring everyone who is under the anointing. Just help them, except I ask you to do so. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your families are restored. Your families are delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, please sit down. Let's see if we can continue. Don't worry, they'll be fine. If you have a space to sit, sit. So we're discussing the subject of enlargement. That it is possible for an individual to experience increase on all sides. That means your spiritual fire. When we talk of enlargement, we're not just talking of physical enlargement. When you grow and expand and increase spiritually, when you grow and expand and increase intellectually, when you grow and expand, when your fire for God, when the anointing and the engracing of the Spirit upon your life steps into new horizons, that is also enlargement. Are we together? Now, but I want to point out something very important. There for tonight, I want you to know and if you can still hear me I want you to write this down there is a price there is a price for increase and for enlargement there is a price for increase and enlargement my assignment tonight is to number one open you up to the possibility of increase all wise but then in addition to that, to begin to show you the conditions that must be met for an individual to step into it. You want greater levels of fire, greater levels of grace, greater levels of influence. Please hear me. There is a price. And our inability to understand the price component of spiritual things is the reason why we keep claiming them and never walk in the experience of them. There is a real price for fire there is a price for kingdom wealth there is a price for increase numerically geometrically there is a price for lifting there is a price are we together price number one let's redeem the time what is the first price if i want to enlarge if i am tired of my current level territorially speaking if i am tired of my current level spiritually if i am tired of my current level ministerially politically economically what is the first price that must be paid to help an individual rise listen god is answering your prayer now because some of you have asked questions lord i am a man of god i love you sincerely but why do i remain at the same level even my church at the same level financially at the same level spiritually at the same level after many years nothing seems to change there is a price to be paid price number one please write it down the first price that must be paid is the price of correct perception the price of correct perception you want enlargement in your life correct perception jeremiah chapter 1 please give us verse 11 and 12 and then we examine a few more scriptures jeremiah chapter 1 11 and 12 my goodness the price of correct or accurate perception jeremiah let's read if you can see it ready read it says moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou 
it's a question until then he had proposed to him that right from when you were in your mother's womb i called you i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and the young boy jeremiah said but i'm a little child he says say not that you are a little child but everything i tell you to say you will say and to whoever i send you to go to go to and don't be afraid of their faces and then verse 11 please look up don't worry they will all be fine just look up it says what seest thou and jeremiah replied and said i see the rod of an almond tree next verse verse 12 and the lord says thou hast well seen thou has seen correctly in other words you can see wrongly there was a time that jesus healed a blind man and said what do you see and the man said i see men like trees if jesus had left that man like that and that man wrote a book that man will call men trees perception 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 now keep the scripture there we're not done please keep the scripture there jeremiah 1 verse 12 thou hast well seen as a result i will hasten my word to perform what you have seen not just what i have said the performance is over your perception there cannot be an enlargement until there is a miracle of superior perception now hear me please brothers and sisters servants of the living god co-laborers politicians those in government listen carefully culturally speaking and sociologically speaking every single one represented here we come from different families we come from different cultural backgrounds and many times because of our sociology we have embraced perceptions listen carefully we have embraced perceptions that have come either from culture perceptions that have come from our failures perceptions that have come from the way we were taught hallelujah perceptions that have come from our experiences look up please chances are if i grew up from a family and a background where i never saw the hand of god to bring favor i suffered for everything i spent 10 years to finish primary school another 10 years to finish secondary school another 10 years to finish university another 10 years to start a job if you ever hear a man say god can favor men you may not believe it because your background did not capture that reality if you have never seen the sick healed in your life even though you know god heals the sick chances are you will not believe that god can use you to heal the sick perception is important the first price if you are tired of where you are and god wants to now lift you to a higher plane in the spirit a higher plane in destiny he does a miracle not to where you are but he does a miracle to your spirit he does a miracle to your understanding the first price the price of accurate superior spiritual perception let's have the following scriptures down please genesis chapter 13 from verse 14 we are reading down to 17 media help us genesis chapter 13 this was abraham and lot the bible says that when god called abraham from just to give a little background lot went with him and on account of that partnership god began to prosper lot but a time came when the herdsmen of lot and that of abraham began to have a quarrel and they said we be brethren there is no reason for this quarrel choose a choice land and lot made that choice and went to settle near sodom and when abraham was left alone verse 14 now and the lord said to abraham after lot was separated from him lift up now your eyes what is the first thing responsible for your advancement your eyes not your feet the goal is to move forward but it starts with your eyes your perception he said and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward 15. read with me please if you are a christian one to read for all the land 
which thou seest i will give unto thee and to thy seed forever keep that scripture there not the land that is available it is the one you see that i will give to you not the one that is available all the land which thou seest i will give unto you and to your seed forever next verse please verse 16 and i will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then thy then shall thy seed also be numbered 17 it says now arise now that your eyes are seen your legs can now follow your legs will always move in the direction of your eyes if your eyes sees danger and a mediocre life sees a ministry that cannot grow your legs and your hands will move in the direction of that limitation for god to enlarge abraham the first assignment was his eyes i know you um who is the man of god here any my no no don't worry this man you just lay your hands on that lady just do what i'm asking you to do on her shoulder just uh, not her head just lay her hands there just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus i speak peace to you now help that lady huh? someone maybe get something and just clean her up or just now listen carefully everyone so the first price watch this is the price of what accurate perception accurate perception let me tell you this it is difficult for god to do much with a man of god with an individual with a territory that limits him through their perception the assignment of faith is not just to make you hear what god is saying but to see what god is saying because you can doubt what you hear but you can never doubt what you see you can't say i'm wearing white you can't say i'm wearing red you can't say i'm wearing a suit because you are seeing if all you are hearing is an audio you may guess what would this man be wearing are we together perception for a long time god wanted to lift and honor abraham but abraham could not carry the kind of perception that will establish him as the father of all nations so one time the Lord helped him by bringing him out. He said, try to count the stars. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He counted, he could not. He said, so shall your seed be. Finally, Abraham agreed with God. And the Bible says, God credited unto him for righteousness. Accurate perception. For all the land which thou seest, I will give unto you. Now pay attention, in Numbers chapter 13, we are dealing with the first price. We'll just take that one alone for tonight. Numbers chapter 13, let's start from verse 1. This was the, a chronicle of what happened to the 12 spies. Remember that spies had been sent to go and spy the land. And I'd like us to examine the power of perception and its implication they were about to possess a land and their perception limited them ready it's a long reading please be patient media will just keep walking together please and the lord spake unto moses saying verse 2 send thou men that they may search the land of canaan which i give unto the children of israel now watch this god is saying i have given it all but there is something you must do to step into possession of it so he says every man choose people to come verse 3 we'll see if we can jump a few verses moses commanded by the lord now 
and all those who are the heads of the children of Israel four and these were their names please go to verse 7 let's just jump their names for the sake of time and of the tribe of Issachar Egal the son of Joseph aha let's continue I want to show you what happened when they were sent to spy the land of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, or Jehoshua. This would be what we call Joshua, right? And of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. Sorry about the whole chronicle. The tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. Uh huh. It's a long reading of the tribe of Joseph, Manasseh, 12. Let's go to 13. We'll keep moving until we are done with the numbering. 14. You see how long we are trying to jump this. Now, it says these are the names. Okay, just keep 17. It says these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun. He called him Jehoshua. That's where you get the word Joshua. Jehoshua, God our salvation, the one who saves and Moses sent them to spy the land and said unto them get you up this way southward and go into the mountain 80 and see the land what it is and the people that dwell therein whether they be strong or weak few or many and what the land is that dwell in whether it be good or bad and the cities that be that they dwell in whether they be tents or strongholds and what is the land is whether it be fat or lean whether there be wood or not it says be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land now the time was the time of the first tribe graves watch this so they all went 12 of them they searched the land from the wilderness of zin to rehob as men come to hamath next verse and they ascended by the south and they came to hebron and all these other places they came down 23 they came to the brook of Escol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes and they bear it between upon two staff and they brought the pomegranates and of the figs next verse the place was called the brook Escol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down thence we're reading to go ahead and they return now follow this now so moses sent them go to the land spy the land a comprehensive search and bring us miracles bring us testimonies all right and the bible says they returned from searching the land after 40 days and they went and came to moses and to aaron the priest and all the congregation of the children of israel onto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land 27 and they told them here's their report now we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit thereof 28 nevertheless ladies and gentlemen look at the danger just lead them to their seats gradually right you can just lead them quietly to their seat the ushers can do that nevertheless please look up it says the people be strong that dwell in the land of the cities and the city the cities of our world and very great and moreover we saw the children of anak the giants now there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites the jebusites amorites in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan Caleb kept quiet and was listening to the rest as they were reporting and the nation of Israel was becoming threatened and discouraged by the perception they were selling to them and Caleb shut them down at once said you are not the only one who went there we all went there don't generalize your interpretation you are not the only Nigerian we are all Nigerians you are not the only one who the economy is the economy can be bad for everybody but don't generalize experiences this is what Caleb is saying Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once look at perceptions two of them went to the same place they saw the same challenge their interpretations were different 
Caleb said, even if you want now, we are ready to go. And possess it, he said, for we are well able to overcome it. But the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against these people. Why? For they are stronger than we, 32. And they brought up what kind of report? A poor perception, an unscriptural perception is called an evil report. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. I don't know where they saw this one in that journey. And all the people that we saw were men of great stature. Now, I'd like you to read this. Ready? I forbid this from happening to your life, but I pray that you read it now. One to read. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come out of the giants. And we were in our own sight. Stop! 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 We were in whose sight? Not their own sight. We do not know what they are thinking about us. But based on what we think they are thinking, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. They never had the opportunity to talk with the giants and say, what do you think about us? The same way you look at failure, you look at limitations, you look at ministry. For someone else, he's seen ministry as an opportunity to serve the purposes of the kingdom from where you are to the ends of the earth for another person he's seen a burden that leads men to die to bring failure and defeat for someone else he's seen a great life even in the midst of adversity that when men say there is a casting down for you you shall say there is a lifting up but for someone you can sit down and allow life beat you left right center and say how can they allah sharia the first key if you want to rise to be mighty and to enlarge spiritually financially territorially ministerially listen carefully is the price of accurate correct perception when we see wrong we believe wrong and we act wrong listen to me there are many of you here who the call of god is upon your life but based on your background you have been told you can't serve the lord leave all the people who came from rich families who have traveled to the u.s and come back you who has come from a village somewhere is not for you whereas you go back to bed and you see god telling you i want to do more with you you may look like you're a weak person but there are destinies upon your shoulder and whilst you are preparing do you know let me tell you this respectfully speaking this is a plague in africa there can be an indigenous individual who has an idea that can transform a territory and everyone will push them and say no we don't think this is nice someone will come from somewhere who was thrown from his own territory because of incompetence but just because he carries a persona that is foreign we will rush and and attend to them at the detriment of the creativity within the territory there are brilliant minds in africa there are mighty men and women of god in nigeria there are mighty industrialists in nigeria there are women of value and power in nigeria there are mothers with excellence and power but our perception is what has stopped us from increasing there are some of you god has spoken to you years ago that this ministry is going to expand by land and at the time god spoke to you you look at the size of the ministry only 60 people and you said land for what and had you obeyed god and bought land at that time right now you will not be biting your finger in shame
there are some of you here God spoke to you I want to send you abroad try this scholarship exam and you laughed at yourself ah it's not for people like us I am grateful with the little God has given me can I tell you this there is a thin line between contentment and mediocrity it is good to be contented but mediocrity is a dangerous programming and I say respectfully speaking not to insult but you see we need the grace of God to help us to believe in ourselves and sustain the grace to expand our perceptions it is true I speak to you as though I'm speaking to family you must believe God to be able to take you from where you are man of God God can pick you right from this city there is a grace God can place upon your life that will bring people all over the world to come it doesn't it, you don't have to just go there there is a grace for where the carcasses are the Bible says there the eagles will. but if you don't believe you can sit down there and continue to compare yourself with yourself and the Bible says that is not wisdom I came to challenge you tonight if it is enlargement that you desire please hear me there is more that God can do in your life do you know many years ago Bishop sir I was in one room one room it was from that one room I was having visions of the globe it was from that one room I was having visions of nations coming I would get up and from that one room I would write what I saw and I believed God that one day I will stand before presidents one day I will stand before kings when God said it I believed it how it will happen I did not know but one thing I know is worthy worthy is the Lamb worthy worthy is the Lamb worthy worthy is the Lamb that one day I will be taking the gospel to the nations that I will speak the gospel before kings and before nobles how it will happen I did not know but I believed him brothers and sisters I bring you words of faith and words of encouragement some of you are standing here you remind me of the Reinhard Bonke crusade many years ago I was one of the people in the crowds in that crusade I came there with hunger I was already a man of God but there was a dimension I did not see in my life and my ministry and I came with hunger to come and receive and that great veteran of the gospel of blessed memory while he stood there i was part of the crowd for six hours i stood with hunger listen to me ladies and gentlemen let me speak to you you can just help her you can if you can take her back to her seat and she does not disturb no problem just don't malhandle her just take her gradually these are just manifestations of the spirit now pay attention please listen listen I remember in that crusade it was on that crusade ground that was the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit that I saw he finished preaching just like this other people came for entertainment other people came to do man of God on the crusade ground I came with hunger because I was tired of that current level I had seen a dimension of the workings of the spirit in his life and I desired with all my heart and when he finished preaching he was going to take water so that he would minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost and something supernatural happened my eyes were opened and I saw a bird without exaggeration that bird would be as big as this auditorium I just saw it moving I thought everyone who was seeing it but I was the only one who was seeing hovering round I said what is this by the time I was done from that vision I had turned to back the stage I didn't even know when I had turned and the Holy Spirit took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters and he told me the union between the spoken word and the movement of the Spirit is what bends the miraculous I saw it by revelation Am I wasting your time tonight? We are going to pray. Perception. Right from that place I believed him. Ah. And gradually, gradually the Lord began to show mercy. 
and today all I can say is glory be to the name of the Lord the doer of every good thing the Lord sent me here to tell you and it is true that where you have encompassed this mountain and this level long enough there are men of God here the Lord has brought me here to push you stop giving excuses it's time to do ministry that brings glory to the name of the Lord stop giving excuses for lack of miracles I'm not called into the miraculous It's a lie there's no such thing as that is because you have not enlarged your heart to contact the genuine grace that provides it oh it's because I'm not domiciled I'm not a resident of Adam our state that's why ministry is not growing it's not true it's not true kill all your excuses and say Lord I'm tired of giving excuses I open up my spirit why is my prayer life up today and down tomorrow why is my word life up today and down tomorrow why is there no influence multiplied in my life oh Adam our people are greedy they will not give me money it's not true another person will come into the city and they're following him with seeds kill every excuse you see when you take responsibility God is ready to show you mercy I knew that there had to be more to ministry I made up my mind that I did not want to do ministry that was around jealousy and competition because that's what happens when you don't have results when you don't have results you don't have to be a bad person you will continue to go through the circle of jealousy petty gossip and all of these things that's always what happens when you don't have results when you are poor and you see people bless you will insult them when you fail and you see people succeed you will find a way of saying that they cut corners when God does not seem to bring that kind of honor that you deserve and you see people excelling let me tell you this the cure for all of these things is to trust God to obtain grace to expand Joseph only forgave his brothers because he had become king if they met him in the cave he would not forgive them there is so, do you know one of the reasons why many of us are still holding bitterness is because we don't yet have results there is a way God will so lift you it becomes unnecessary to discuss some things again I believe that there are worship ministers in Adamawa state that must rise to become global voices I believe that there are men and women of God here in this auditorium that must write not for self glorification but for the purpose of the lifting of the name of Jesus I believe that there are businessmen here a few of your businessmen and politicians have shown you the possibilities that happen when people can dare to believe themselves everybody has the destiny of increase and influence if you have not tapped into it you are shortchanging the potential of that which Christ has done in your life but the first price is perception there are some of you as a result of this conference you need to go back this night and carry the notebook where you and the Holy Ghost were writing many things years ago remember that old notebook go and take it back again and check what God wrote that you have stopped believing now you wrote in that notebook that there are people you will be sharing the stage with God revealed to you that a day will come you will be lifting people from wheelchairs but now when you started ministry and it looked hard you just shelved it away and said no I don't think that is possible I bring you a word of life there are many women today are called into the ministry of prophetic warfare and intercession right from the days of your youth you keep having visions and having prophetic insights you sleep you have dreams they come to pass exactly the way you saw what do you think was moving you there is a grace but you have refused to give it expression perception let me encourage the youth in this place and within this territory I love you with all my heart and let me tell you let nobody talk you down to make you believe that you cannot from this state bring up something that blesses the nations can I tell you this my life is proof that God can pick you from anywhere and exalt you and place you there and any spirit that has been lying to you 
that you cannot move past this level i cost that spirit from your life now enlarge your tent there is no enlargement except there is space one last scripture and we'll wrap up for today apologize for the time second kings chapter 6 you are my hiding place second kings chapter uh let's look at four we'll look at six tomorrow second kings chapter four this was the story of the wife of the sons of the prophet the first seven verses please just take them gently if they can move to their seats. Second Kings 4 verse 1. Second Kings 4 verse 1. Second Kings 4 verse 1. Now there cried, please look up. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha. Follow this carefully. It says, thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor the creditor is come sorry about that i'll just quote it that the creditor is come to take two of the sons as collateral listen carefully do you know while this woman was crying in her house the oil to set her free was in that house but the only problem with the oil that was that it was put in a small container the problem was not the oil the problem was the container carrying it every time the woman kept saying i don't have anything oh god bless me heaven was saying madam you have all it takes to pay your debt and live a comfortable life but she said where is it and based on her perception she saw a little cruise of oil and felt no this does not carry anything the bible says verse 2 please give us verse 2 let's hurry up verse 2 Elisha said unto her, what should I do to you? He says, tell me, what do you have in Adamawa state? What do you have in Yola? Pastors, what do you have in your church? And here's what the woman said. And this is the response of many, many people. Thine handmaid had not anything save a pot of oil. And the prophet said, that's it. God will never leave you without a witness. The factor that leads to your lifting and your glory has always been there. But you have put it in a small capacity. Great oil but carried in a small mindset. So you cannot go past this limitation. Here was the advice of the, of the prophet. He said, go and borrow the vessels. You don't have to borrow oil. But you need to borrow vessels. Of all thy neighbors even empty vessels borrow not a few for we're reading to verse 7 when thou art come in shut the door upon thee and thy sons and pour out into all the vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Do you know what he was telling her he said look man of god it is true that the visions you have seen they are great but those visions are being kept in a small perception they are kept in a small mindset your perception is small he's saying go and exchange it expand your capacity buy books buy the truth interact with minds that god has helped and shown mercy now watch what happened she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and brought the vessels and she poured out verse 6 the miracle began to happen and it came to pass as she began to pour the oil into bigger vessels what happened the oil started increasing there is a relationship between space and increase space and increase if a woman wants her child to keep growing she has to bring him out of that space because that space is exhausted when he comes out of a bigger space what happens he begins to grow are we together now the Bible says, she said, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And 
the oil respected the fact that her capacity had come to its limit if there was still greater vessels the oil will continue to flow again and the instruction came from verse 7 when you have now expanded your capacity it says go and sell the oil did you ever read in the gospel when Jesus was talking about the parable of the ten virgins the ones whose oil finished he said go to them that sell these are the people that sell that's how they got the oil to sell are you seeing now the people who he recommended he said there are people who sell this oil for your lamp I tell you where they got the oil they got it as they were expanding their capacity they had more to pay their debt and they now had it to sell when you have the oil to sell the nations will come to you they will not come and meet nothing listen to me the nations will not come to you just because you are called of God the nations will come to you because you have enlarged spiritually can God put you in the middle of a stadium to minister to people and be sure that you will not be disappointed have you enlarged to that degree have you enlarged to carry grace to that degree can God keep you before kings today and be sure that you will be able to represent the purposes of the kingdom with accuracy and with intention ladies and gentlemen God does not have a problem bringing enlargement but there is a price and the first price tonight is perception go back home and carry your Bible and begin to read about your future Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you right from that one room I believe I believe it shall come to pass that God will set you above nations and kingdoms I believe many years ago when God called his servant the bishop during the days and the times of the patriarch now gone Archbishop Benson Idahosa he believed we are gathered today in honor of a man who believed God can I tell you this the signs don't go before you these signs only follow them that believe hear me hear me let me explain to you don't assume you understood what I said if what is following you is wrong don't drive what is following you drive what is attracting what is following you hear me these signs if failure and limitation and retrogression and shame and reproach is following you they are not following you they are following your perception those signs are coming in honor to and of your perception you don't drive them by saying go away shame go away uh -uh. you drive them by introducing light Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light we're going to pray it's time to still be in that one room but let your mind dream with the Spirit of God and go to the nations it's time to be in Adamawa state here and yet allow that prophetic ministry to rise beyond this city it's time to allow yourself many of you here are brilliant people by any standard but you have allowed status quo to keep you I made up my mind that as far as loving Jesus representing him and serving his purposes are concerned I will continue to expand and enlarge until I sustain the capacity that will help the nation see Jesus the global harvest is a mandate that we must not fail in discipling nations and helping them experience the love and the grace and the power of Jesus is a mandate that we must not fail I vowed and I made a covenant with God as a man of God that I will never come into any city and any meeting and watch the sick go back sick the oppressed go back oppressed and all I do is waste people's time and talk to them no 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 
but making mere confessions like that and stopping at that will only end you in shame and reproach there is a responsibility dimension to enlargement don't just say God enlarge me he wants to but are you willing to pay the price the mother of James and John came and met Jesus and said can you grant that when you are done with Caesar and all these people grant that my son sit at your left and your right and here's what Jesus said the space is available but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism Apostle I want the anointing like Reinhard Bonke and Benny Hill that space is still vacant in the realm of the spirit but can you pay the price to expand to that level Apostle I want to walk in the prophetic I want to become a leading voice that serves the purposes of God within Yola and the Northeast and this country can I tell you the truth it is true that there is an election of grace but every one of us has an opportunity to rise to become the best and the greatest as God desires the challenge is that many of us are not willing to pay the price someone by this teaching tonight you need to get back to that price if you when others are sleeping you carry your Bible go to a bookstore minimize social media distractions go in there to sit down and waste time gisting and sit down I'm on my way going somewhere listen to me my dear people some of you need to sit down and get materials all those three four five phones you have you don't need them throw away all those things and have one or at least two is enough sit down when other people are roaming around and loitering around as though they do not know where they are going sit down and burn the candles don't pity yourself you will pamper yourself to failure and mediocrity there is nobody preparing for the olympic who wants to prepare at the point of comfort the bible says that he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully can i tell you this till today you go back to my laptop you go back to my phones there are videos i'm watching there are books i'm reading even though i came to this city i came for a conference like this and god has honored me to be the speaker as i return back now don't think i'm going to be sitting and crossing my leg and browsing i also have spiritual projects that i'm on now as far because compared to where god is taking me i'm just one step out of the cave i've not started at all destroy arrival mentality i've arrived based on what standard those you call men of God today in Bible days, they were ushers. Make up your mind until your presence can drive every devil out of Yola without bragging and without boasting. Make up your mind as a man of God that if you ever stand and pronounce to someone and say, God bless you from, from your altar, the fire that emanates from it when it rests upon that person he must return with testimonies listen nobody will clap for you twice for the same realm and the same level if people clap for you once that's okay for that realm if you remain at that level nobody will ever celebrate the investment of god's grace upon your life god has called you to be a prophet and it is true that you have the prophetic but your capacity is small out of 10 prophecies only one is accurate discipline yourself and go back to the secret place don't move around prophet anything please don't feel insulted i didn't come to insult you we are co-laborers but i'm only challenging you some of you here are worship ministers don't go around celebrating mediocrity sit down and gauge yourself by a global reference thank god for the little invitations here but lord let songs come from heaven i obtain grace refuse to be a local champion refuse to compare yourself with people within your environment and say at least i am better no you are not called to that life of competition your destiny is to the nations price number one as we pray the price of perception what is our prayer tonight Lord, I'm tired. I don't know what has programmed a life of mediocrity in me. 
I don't know what has let me think that as a mother and as a woman I cannot be used by God I do not know what has made me think that I will die without building my own house there are many of us here the only thing increasing in our life is our age nothing else is growing nothing else is increasing the only thing growing in your life is your age there's room for expansion I was so honored when Bishop was graciously sharing with me earlier on about some projects that are ongoing I was so touched and I said can you imagine at this level there is still that grace God has granted me by the privilege of his grace to interact and relate with the fathers of faith in this nation and I say it with every sense of humility there is none of them today as I speak that does not have a major destiny project ongoing first in their lives and across the ministry it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found in you prayer point number one father let fire come from heaven and plant a dissatisfaction let it burn away the arrival mentality at this level in the name of Jesus I obtain fire from heaven go ahead and pray inside outside fire from heaven I refuse to be satisfied with this current level someone is praying a man of God is praying a businessman is praying Take a pacata baracatos of Branda Gatebelecata, Scata Brata Catele Caparus Yata, Embra Cateca Paracatos Cata Branda Gatecata. Are you praying? Lord, I can't remain at this level, not at this level of signs and wonders, not at this level of the apostolic and the prophetic, not at this level of the miraculous, not at this level of fasting and prayer. There has to be greater fire upon my prayer life. Enlarge me, O oh God. Yola, you pray. Hey, da pakata prante kaskata prakata la katabria. You are a man of God. Pray. Enta kata prais kada la kaparusha la katia. The friends that they can be like a prakoto salaka tabriata, a krakato pakato salaka tabret nega devela devos, a krakata pakata prata kata nega tepa, sate baras kate prata kate parus kate prata kate balata. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I will never be at this level. I never, I will never remain at this level. Politicians pray. Not at this level. Mama pray. Lord, you can take me to higher grounds, higher levels of fire, higher levels of grace, higher levels of power, higher levels of territory, land, space. There are churches, it's time to move out of that small place by the Spirit. Don't be tired, we are praying. Ali Paratos Kadabranta Kaparushadia, Ekrakata Bakata Bakoto Prontos Koto Predegata, Shalakata Branda Gata Katos Kata Branda Gata Velakata Proskane, Embrakate Salakata Branda Gata Variakata. Ebalada Branda Gabretas Catabrotos Cotto Branda Gede Velecate. 
Aleluya. 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 Listen to me. The next prayer point. You're going to pray that every negative thinking that came from my background or came from my past. Listen, when I talk about enlightenment and a superior orientation, I'm not talking about outsourcing a context that is out of scripture. There's many things people call enlightenment that is, is, is just nonsense. Let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not just excel just because he was the son of God. At age 12, when his colleagues were running up and down, he was in the temple. So when Satan came, he didn't say, I grew up knowing. He said, it is written. You can tell life situation, I grew up knowing. Or you can say, it is written. Are you ready to pray? Father, every mindset, just because you've held error for many years, does not mean that you are right. Listen. There are some of us, the reason why increases do not come is because there are ideas and perceptions we have received and we have held on to and we have refused to let it go. That keep us poor, that keep us mediocre. Lift your voice and pray. Father, in this conference, I expand my mind. I declare my disloyalty to any thinking and any pattern that is not consistent with the character of the Christ. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Last prayer point and we're done for tonight. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. He says, satisfy me early with your mercy. There is the spirit of lateness in Africa. If a young boy of 22 or 24 builds a house, buys a car, trains his siblings, and finances the gospel, they will say he went to do blood money. But when you build a house at 50 or 60, they say, aha, it's normal. There is a spirit that fights speed in the lives of people that when it's time listen can i tell you this the unit of god does not rush people i know but there is speed in the kingdom the unit of destiny is time and dominion over time is real dominion there are many of us right now as it is almost nothing is moving in your life your family is still there out of a family of 15 people only one person has been able to lift up his head a bit no you're going to pray lord bring speed of enlargement to my destiny go ahead and pray speed speed of enlargement for the sake of your kingdom for the sake of your glory speed Bring speed to my enlargement. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please pay attention. Tomorrow, now listen please please listen please listen i do not want you i'm lending my voice with bishop and i want you to make whatever sacrifice you can make we have two more sessions together i believe do not miss the session in the morning and then by the grace of god tomorrow night will be a miracle service we'll have the time to minister to the sick to prophesy and it will be a time of impartation. I'll be sharing the remaining keys that it takes for enlargement and we'll be discussing the subject of faith to really understand the operation of faith. And then we're going to be praying for the sick. 
may i please request if the bishop will permit that tomorrow night if the bishop allows i want you to write a list of everything that has mocked god in your life i want you to bring it here there is fire that will fall from heaven over this city in this place and can i tell you even if there is no space if you will sit on the roof sit on the roof this conference make up your mind to connect with the flow of what god is doing we're going to be praying i'm going to be ministering to you there are some of you who i know you have come to receive impartations you see what you see is an election of grace and when god sends a word to jacob he intends for it to get to israel the days of superstar christianity is over god helps us so that we help ourselves hallelujah and then every devil of infirmity every medical report everything that has defied god in your life already some of you will return tomorrow with strange testimonies over what god has done to you tonight i speak over your life in the name of jesus for every one of you under the sound of my voice i decree and declare by the spirit of grace supernatural encounters for you this night some of you will go to bed tonight and you will have angelic encounters where the blueprint of your destiny will be open unto you hear me some of you will go back home and the sleep you will not even find it god will ask you to open notebooks and you will start writing things for the sake of those god has sent to you when that prompting comes don't fight it some of you will spend tonight worshiping and praying in the spirit and making a fresh dedications that lord wherever you want to take me to and no matter how far you want to take me i am ready to go with you i bless you in the name of jesus christ and i pray for grace for you as you return in the morning i pray for grace for you as we have that miracle service in the night go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray amen god bless you hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.